Good evening, Trinity. This is Jennifer coming to you for evening prayer for Friday, July 31st. And our saint that we're honoring today is Ignatius. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven. O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The Psalm appointed is Psalm 73. Truly, God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had nearly slipped. I had almost tripped and fallen because I envied the proud and saw the prosperity of the wicked for they suffer no pain and their bodies are sleek and sound. In the misfortunes of others, they have no share. They are not afflicted as others are. Therefore they wear their pride like a necklace and wrap their violence about them like a cloak. Their iniquity comes from gross minds and their hearts overflow with wicked thoughts. They scoff and speak maliciously out of their haughtiness. They plan oppression. They set their mouths against the heavens and their evil speech runs through the world. And so the people turn to them and find in them no fault. They say, how should God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? So then, these are the wicked, always at ease. They increase their wealth. In vain I have kept my heart clean and washed my hands in innocence. I have been afflicted all day long and punished every morning. Had I gone on speaking this way, I should have betrayed the generation of your children. When I tried to understand these things, it was too hard for me until I entered the sanctuary of God and discerned the end of the wicked. Surely you set them in slippery places. You cast them down in ruin. Oh, how suddenly do they come to destruction, come to an end and perish from terror. Like a dream when one awakens, O Lord, when you arise, you will make their image vanish. When my mind became embittered, I was sorely wounded in my heart. I was stupid and had no understanding. I was like a brute beast in your presence. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me by your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And having you, I desire nothing upon earth. Though my flesh and heart should waste away, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Truly, those who forsake you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful. But it is for me to be near God. I have made the Lord God my refuge. I will speak of all your works in the gates of the city of Zion. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And now the lessons. 
The first reading is from Matthew chapter 28. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. As he said, Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Song of Mary my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now about our Saint Ignatius of Loyola. He was a mystic, an educator, preacher, and founder of the Jesuits, and he died July 31st in the year 1556. Inigo de Recalde de Loyola, youngest of 13, one of my sources says 11 children, of Don Beltran Yanez de Loyola and Maria Sanez de Licona y Balda, was born in 1491 in the family castle in the Basque province of Gisboscoa in northeastern Spain near the French border. As befitted a boy from an aristocratic family, he spent some time as a page at the court of Ferdinand and Isabella, the rulers of Spain. Here, by his later testimony, he was involved in gambling, wenching, and dueling. He got into trouble with the law, but escaped punishment because he was technically a cleric. This does not mean that he was destined for the priesthood. In those days, someone becoming a priest went through seven steps. Doorkeeper, reader, exorcist, acolyte, subdeacon, deacon, and priest. The first four were called minor orders and did not involve any serious commitment but they did make one technically a cleric, which was useful if one got arrested for anything less than murder or treason. Probably many young noblemen took the first step simply as a precaution. Later, the law extended the definition of cleric to anyone who could read. Then he entered military service and fought in only one major battle, the defense of Pamplona against the French in 1521. The professional soldiers knew that their position was indefensible and proposed to surrender. Inigo, or Ignatius, to give him the Latin form of his name, had visions of military glory and urged his comrades to fight. He was promptly hit in the leg by a cannonball. The town surrendered anyway, and the French sent him home on a stretcher. The leg was badly set and did not heal properly. It had to be rebroken and reset and again it healed crookedly and left him with a permanent limp. Meanwhile, he was bedridden for many months and spent the time reading. He asked for tales of knightly adventure, but instead was given A Life of Christ, written by a Carthusian monk. He read it and his life was transformed. 
He went on a pilgrimage to Montserrat, near Barcelona, where he hung up his sword over the altar and then spent about a year at Manresa, near Montserrat, first working as a nurse and orderly in the hospital there, and then retiring to a cave to live as a hermit and study the imitation of Christ by Thomas Akempis, a book urging the Christian to take Christ as example and seek daily to follow in his footsteps. It is probably during this year that he wrote his Spiritual Exercises, a manual of Christian prayer and meditation. He directs the reader to begin with an event in the life of Christ and to imagine the scene in detail, to replay the episode in his mind like a movie script, and to try to feel as if he himself had witnessed the event, and then to use this experience as a motive for love, gratitude, and dedication to the service of God. The book is available today in hardcover and paperback. It has been much used by Christians of all varieties. John Wesley was enthusiastic about it. Ignatius then made a pilgrimage to Jerusalem to see with his own eyes the scenes of our Lord's life and death. He wanted to stay and preach to the Muslims, but the Franciscan stationed there advised him that he needed an education in order to preach effectively. That's a little bit about Ignatius of Loyola. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let this evening be holy, good, and peaceful. We entreat you, O Lord, that your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith in fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ, we entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of Ignatius and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. Almighty God, from whom all good things come, you called Ignatius of Loyola to the service of your divine majesty and to find you in all things. Inspired by his example and strengthened by his companionship, may we labor without counting the cost and seek no reward other than knowing that we do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, by your death, you took away the sting of death. Grant to us, your servants, so to follow in faith where you have led the way, that we may at length fall asleep peacefully in you and wake up in your likeness. For your tender mercy's sake. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Have a wonderful, blessed evening.